Hey friends, my name is Austin Leibel, and today I'm going to be talking about how do we take data in SQL and join two different tables together based on the results that we want to return. So we're going to be talking about inner joins and left outer joins as the main two types of joins uh, that users are most frequently going to be working with and the differences between them based on what they are going to return and when you call upon them. So let's get to it. All right, hello again, friends. My name is Austin Leibel, and I am a trainer at Pragmatic Works. And one of the things I teach for the Pragmatic Works training company is SQL. Now, we cover many different topics, whether with live training or our recorded trainings on our learning management system. But during that, one of the things that I focus on specifically is SQL or structured query language. Now, one of the questions I often get in SQL is I know there's different types of joins, different ways to bring two or more tables together in a set result and the results that you want to get once you execute a SQL statement, but I don't really understand the difference between them. So that's what we're going to be focusing on today. Now, when you can't really talk without joins without showing, of course, the traditional Venn diagram for looking and seeing how the different joins interact. So let's draw this really quickly on our screen so we can better understand it. I'm going to draw two circles. We're just going to focus on really just two different joins here. Circles, different sizes, doesn't really matter. Our tables are different sizes too, so it kind of plays into this. Now, on one of our circles here, this is what we're going to be using to represent our product table. We just have a list of products in our database, and they can be sold, and they have the ability to uh, appear multiple times on like a sales table, which is the other table we're going to go through and compare this to. So we have our products table, and we have our sales table but we want to know which products have sold or maybe which products have not sold. So we need to go through and do a join to bring the two different tables together and compare the results. So depending on the different types of joins that we can go through and work with, we get back different results. Now, the first join we're going to be talking about here is what we're going to call an inner join. And that's essentially just going to have the records that match from the products table and the sales table that get returned in our results. So all of this kind of matching records the intersection of our two circles, our two tables inside of our Venn diagram. So the inner join is going to pull back all of the products that have been sold that appear on our sales table. The products can appear multiple times on the sales table because as we're a company that's selling things, hopefully we have products that are selling more than once for ourselves. Now there can also be products that appear on the product table that don't necessarily appear on the sales table if they have not been sold. They're a new product or they're an old product that we no longer sell for a specific year. So that's going to be the inner join and what we're going to focus on first. Now, the other side of this would be the left outer join. So a left outer join would essentially take the left side of our circle here. It's not going to be structured like that in our SQL statement. It's going to be more top to bottom. So, but this left circle over here for products, we want to see everything from the left side of the circle. So this entire circle here, and then also the matching record from our sales. Now, how this is going to be different than the inner join is we're not just going to return the matching records where the products and the sales appear in the same results. We're going to show all the products, whether they have been sold or not, as well as the products that have been sold also. Again, depending on the request that you make or need to uh, generate for your users or results, uh, you can go through and kind of depict which left outer join or inner join you want to use based on the results you want to get. All right. Let's go test this now with the Adventure Works database. So I'm going to start out by just looking at my different products on my product table. I'm going to go to select star from my production dot product table and see how many products I have. And by running this query, I can see that I have 504 records that appear. So 504 different products that my, my company can sell, has the ability to sell. Now, the other thing I want to go through and look at is go through and see all the different sales of the products. And where that's going to occur is on the sales.sales order detail table. There's going to have to be a relationship between our different tables to be able to join the data together, which is what we're going to have to create in our join statement. So this product ID here that appeared from the production.product table is also going to appear on the sales order detail table as well. We have this product ID. That's how we're going to make that relationship and create our on statement to be able to generate 
the uh, the join. So this has 121,000 records. Again, multiple products can show up on this table a, a bunch of times, right? You can see up here at the top, 776 probably appears multiple times. Now, a quick way I could say, you know, how many products have been sold inside of this and maybe have not been sold, just to kind of do a little bit of math, as well as to pull in what we call our distinct limiter. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to do this this uh, select the distinct records on sales .sales order detail, and maybe not all of the distinct records, but specifically the ones for the product ID. So I just want to see how many times a product ID shows up on this result, uh, only one time uh, for each one. So 266 records for ourselves. So we can kind of do some math there and say 504 minus 266 is approximately about 250. So only about half of our products have been sold. Now, again, depending on the type of join that we do, we're going to get back different results, whether we want to see how these products have been sold or not. So let's go start with the inner join to begin with. I want to do an inner join to bring back, again, just the matching records where the production.product products show up as well as the sales.sales order detail products. So I'm going to start out by just saying I want to select the product ID from the production.product table. Now, this is technically going to be the left side of our join. Now, this is, of course, going to be written top to bottom, but this is going to simulate the left table that we were looking at earlier in that Venn diagram. Now, the other thing that we're going to want to do is bring back tape data from the sales.sales .sales order detail table as well. So how I'm going to do that is I'm going to either write out with an inner join, the words inner join, or you can just write out join. Either one is going to return the exact same thing. Inner is uh, implicit when creating just a join statement. So if I just say join here, uh, it will give me back an inner join. Now what the table I want to join is going to be the sales dot sales order detail. Now this is going to be the right side of our join, the, the right side of this, right? So uh, if I go through and I create a join, I'm also going to have to go in and I'm going to have to say how these tables are related. Now, the easiest way to do this is going to be by aliasing the tables before you actually go through and create your join statement. And what we mean by that is saying for this production.product, I want to refer to this as P. And that way, I don't have to actually go through and mention the schema and the table and the column name in my on condition. So I'm going to do that P for that one, and I'm going to do SOD for my sales order detail table. Now, the other thing that you'll notice here is this kind of red squiggly line for product ID here. There is an ambiguous column name. It does not know that if we are referring to the product ID column from the production.product table or the sales.sales .sales order detail table. So we need to call that out and specify that. So I'm just going to come over here and say, I want to make this for my p.productID. If we don't do that, we will generate an error when we try to run this script. So make sure you call those out. Now, how we're going to make this relationship is I'm going to use the on syntax. I'm going to say, this is a creation of two different tables, a join between two different tables on the basis that the product ID from my uh, product table, p.productID, is equal to the product ID on my sales order detail table. The representation of the product ID that comes from sales order detail is specifically tied to my production.product ones as well. There is a match there, and that's how we're going to make that relationship. All right, so we've gone through, we've created our first inner join to bring back the results of just the records that are going to appear from the production.product table and the sales orders detail table. So let's go ahead and execute that. And we can see there are 121,317 records again. Now, what would be the point of this, right? Didn't we see that this was the exact result earlier when we went through and ran just the sales order detail? And we saw that we had the product ID there of 121,317 results. Well, let's go look at the all the columns here, not just one column at a time. This is going to bring back all the information about the sales for this table. But you'll notice here what is not included from the production.product table that is on the sales order detail table is things like the color, 
the name, the list price, the product number, uh, the weight, the days to manufacture, all that additional information. That is because this is what we would call really like a fact table. And this would be something more known as a dimension table. So this gives context to this. So for my join here, if I wanted to go through and see all of the intricate records of my specific sales that I've made, I could potentially bring over some context from my dimension table, my product table, like the name of the product. And then I could compare that alongside the individual records of my sales order detail table by just saying SOD.star. It's gonna bring over all of the columns from the sales order detail. Now, technically this is going to include product ID two times on here, once there and once there because we called it out specifically in our select statement. And it's also included in the sales order detail table as well. But this gives us some context. Hey, I can now go through and see individual records for every time this product was sold. That's awesome. Now, what we can also start to do with this is maybe we want to bring back all of the records that have not been sold or the products that have not been sold from the production dot product table, as well as the products that have been sold from the sales order detail table. And that would be a perfect instance of wanting to create a left join, but bring back all the records from my product table and then only the matching records from my sales order detail table. So I'm going to copy this query out. I'm going to come down here and paste it one more time and just kind of uh, kickstart some of this so I don't have to have as much context there. So what I'm going to do here, uh, I'm going to say instead of a just traditional join, I'm just going to pull out a left join from here. Literally just say, I want a left join. Now there is a right join, which essentially would kind of do the opposite of the left join, pull back everything from the right side, and then only the matching records from the left. But you're going to see oftentimes a left join is the preferred type of join inside of SQL Server, inside of working with SQL. So when I go through and execute this, and to help us understand this a little bit more, I'm also going to pull back an order by column to order the results by the product ID. When I do a left join compared to an inner join, this is going to give me all of the records from my left side, again, production.product, that have not been sold. So all these null values where they have records coming from sales order detail are not going to appear there. There is no record of this adjustable race product being sold or this bearing ball being sold. So there's not going to be details for that. So we go through, there's just going to be one instance for each individual product. And until we get to the actual sales, which should again be about 250 lines down or so, we start to see some of the actual records here. So we're getting back both the records that have been sold and the records that have not been sold from that product table. Hopefully this was a nice introduction, a kind of idea of the differences between some of the very common joins out there. There are many other types of joins as well, but these are the most two that you really need to know about if you're just starting to getting learning with SQL. If you wanna learn more about some of those other joins, definitely check out our on-demand library where we have exclusive SQL content, tons of available stuff there for you, or check out one of our live boot camps where we have a three-day course where we really scale up your knowledge super fast on working with SQL and getting you authoring uh, SQL statements like this and even more complex ones very, very quickly. Hopefully you've enjoyed this one. I will see you in the next one.